I've seen a lot of buzz about Conmarker's Omni-X lately, and I've been dying to get my hands on one. I've reviewed a fair few lasers now, but this one, this one's been a proper head scratcher. Everything about it feels like it's arguing with itself, professional and polished on the outside, but occasionally questionable underneath. It's a mix of brilliance and bull in roughly equal measure, but overall it's still one of the most capable and versatile lasers I've used, which makes this all the more confusing. And why? And should you buy it? That's entirely up to you, not me. My job is just to show you the truth of what this thing actually is, so you can make an informed decision, not the glossy one that the marketing team wants you to see. Hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. Now, I've said many times, first impressions count, and this thing doesn't so much arrive as make an entrance. The excessively large box came on a pallet, and I had to drag it into the workshop like I was hauling treasure from a shipwreck. Everything inside was individually boxed, wrapped, and sandwiched in foam like high-end military equipment. Honestly, it was impressive right from the start. But then I started building it. Now, unlike most lasers that turn up ready to go, this one wants you to earn it. The process is simple enough on paper, but in practice, it's like assembling IKEA furniture designed by someone with a personal grudge against organization. Conmarker have labeled the boxes beautifully, but then forgot to label the screw sizes. And with a pile of nearly identical bolts, I ended up needing to use a 3D printed measuring chart like some sort of forensic engineer. There is a video guide online, and that's marginally more helpful than the manual but neither mentions a few things, such as several of the machine parts here have, let's say, creative tolerances. After fixing the Z-axis bracket and mounting to the laser head and then cabling up the wiring loom, no problem there, when trying to fit the outer chassis, few of the holes actually lined up with anything resembling a thread. Holding the panel in place while wrestling 12 screws into submission took over an hour and a measurable chunk of my patience and the push-in handles were where it got worse. I could only actually get one in no matter what I tried, and judging by the comments on Conmarker's own website, this frustration is shared with many others. Now, before fitting the lid and handle, they recommend connecting the power and motion cables, which, like the rest, are at least neatly labeled on both the cable and the socket, the rare moment of logic in an otherwise maddening build. Now, around the back, there's an extraction port with two options, a flexible plug or an exhaust adapter. Now, since Conmarker sent me their extractor, we'll get onto that fiasco later, I fitted the hose adapter. And then came the lid, the handle, and finally, the lighting solution. An LED ring light held on with double-sided tape. And nothing says industrial precision like a lighting system that could have been bought from Poundland. Uh, that's the British version of Dollar Tree, guys. Anyway, by the time it was fully assembled, that shiny high-end first impression had started to fade. Now built up, the Omni-X looks professional, heavy, sturdy, and serious. But that image falls apart the moment you look closer. There's a nest of cables hanging out the back rather than being neatly integrated into the machine, panels that don't quite align, and daylight streaming through numerous gaps. Add in the missing handle, open ports, and the generous gap between the base and safety door, and it's a great setup if you like fumes and stray UV light. Now, coming back to that stick on LED light I mentioned earlier, this by default is so bright, it actually makes the alignment preview laser more invisible, which is a special kind of engineering magic. I unplugged it after only three uses to stop my retinas from waving a white flag. Now, functionally, the Omni-X gives you plenty of ports, though most are already occupied by the internal components. There are some spares because ComMaker also sells a rotary tool and conveyor add-on neither of which were sent for me to test, but they are available. The power socket sits at the rear, while the main controls are on front. You get three buttons. One is for power, the other two move the laser head up and down the Z-axis. There's also an emergency stop that genuinely cuts power, and that's good. Now, when powered on, the machine's fan runs constantly at around 70 decibels, even when it's idle, like it's desperate to remind you it exists at all times. Connectivity comes via a USB 3.0 Type-B port and supposedly Wi-Fi, though I couldn't get the latter working or even find a clear way how to set it up. I did ask Conmaker how to set this up, but I had no reply to that question, among some others. 
Inside, the standard configuration includes a 70mm lens with a 7x7cm work area, swapped to the included 150mm B lens, and that doubles to 15x15cm. And it's almost ironic that a machine with a base this large only engraves an area the size of a beer mat. And that engraving area isn't even central on the base, since the head sits to the left of its arm. Now, my unit is the 6 watt version. There's also a 12 watt model at nearly twice the price, which includes a 250mm lens rather than the 150. Doesn't include all three. I, I don't know why. Anyway, changing lenses is easy. Just unscrew one and fit the other. But whilst Commarker provides front lens covers, there's actually nothing for the rear of your secondary lens. So your spare lens sits exposed collecting dust at all times. Now at least the safety side looks considered. The glass cover is marked as OD5 Plus on the website and the included goggles do say OD6 Plus and CE markings and whilst people will be out there going yeah they could make those up yeah they could but faking those would be legally suicidal so I'll assume they're genuine. Still with the number of gaps around the frame I'm genuinely not sure who looked at this and said class one laser yeah that's fine approved tick. Okay. But anyway, as always, I use my own safety glasses because they fully cover my current spectacles. And I've got a separate video on that and other laser safety things that you should be aware of if you're new to them. And I recommend you check that out if you're new to this technology. Moving on. On the side of the head, there's an adjustable autofocus beam. I asked Commarker why it's adjustable and again, no answer. So I left it set to the lowest position and well, it worked perfectly throughout all my testing. So unless you enjoy making life harder, that's where it's gonna stay. But if you can understand why you would want to inaccurately adjust this, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, before getting onto the actual engraving, the software deserves a mention and then some, mostly because it's a bit of a mess. Commarker provides some basic project guides, but nothing to explain how to actually operate the machine or the software itself. They've got a how to build the machine video, and then they've got a few demo engravings, but nothing that bridges the gap between unboxing and understanding. And the software isn't unusable, but it is clunky. It's not actually Commarker's software. It's a third party software that I've seen other laser brands use, and Commarker are having the creator of this software tailor it to their needs. So you can feel that disconnect there because the layout feels random, translations are rough, and a few interface elements glitch or overlap when just resizing the window. It does come with some preset profiles included for different materials, which sounds helpful until you realize there's only one option for each type, such as wood, metal, and so on, with no breakdown of which wood or what metal or what power levels those settings are actually meant for. If you want consistent results, you're still gonna need to run your own tests. And Commarker Studio is also very basic in its approach. There's no visual guides, no previews of what an engraving will look like when you choose a certain setting. There's no gradients to help you understand how your setting might translate to the final result. Just a written list of materials and parameters. It works, but it feels incredibly unfinished. However, this machine is also compatible with Lightburn, which I think many experienced users already rely on anyway. Lightburn itself is powerful, but dated visually. It does the job though, it just still relies heavily on you doing tests and then manually calibrating things. But Commarker Studio does include one genuinely unique feature, which you're gonna need to use because it isn't currently available in Lightburn. This is where you engrave inside crystal or, or glass, and that is a proper UV laser trick. And to be fair, it works. Load a 3D model, set your crystal size and hit go. Simple enough once you've found the right menu. Now, coming back to something I mentioned earlier, Commarker also sent me their smoke extractor. The packaging was nowhere near as careful as the main unit. In fact, and sorry I didn't video this, this unit was just thrown in a random box with what looked like some spare padding foam they had laying around. The result is that this arrived with the corner smashed. And yeah, I know I got it as a freebie, but again, just this shows me the level of care they put into things or, or don't. Anyway, this is a standard small filter, big fan, layered filters, a power switch, and a dial to control the suction power. Unfortunately, the hose they supplied didn't fit the extractor or the laser, which completely nullifies its usefulness. And look guys, I know I can fix this with a flexi hose easy enough, but I'm here to show things as they come. And honestly, 
this is embarrassing. Right then, the important part, actually using the Omni X. Now using it has been a mix of frustration and fascination. What makes this laser stand out is its versatility. The UV light source can mark and cut softer materials like paper, felt, wood, and even stone, but it also marks metals, stainless steel included, without needing special coatings. That flexibility alone puts it in a different class to most machines with a diode and UV combo. But the real showpiece though is what it can do with transparent materials materials. It can mark directly on or even inside acrylic, crystal and glass. And that has been on my want to try list for ages. I loved the idea of creating those laser etched crystal blocks. Well, at least I did right up until I went on holiday and took a closer look at what they had stacked on souvenir shelves. And these were selling in their engraved state for less than what I can buy the raw blanks for. Still, where the real potential is, I think, lies in the customization of these materials. Etching bespoke art or logos into those blocks makes sense commercially. And for hobbyists, it's just fun. I actually dropped the artillery witch from Trench Crusade inside one of the crystal cubes purely because I could, and it came out beautifully. And I also etched my faux hammer logo into the base of some home glassware, and then just to show off, etched the same logo inside the base of the glass itself. But to do that, it was a bit manual because I just lowered the laser a few millimeters from its autofocus location. And the UV beam's precision also let me depth etch a design into stone that I found in the garden and it's got a few spikes here because there was dust up on the lens but anyway other than that it handled it fine though Commarker's software can't use depth maps it only works with full 3D model files STL files and that is a limitation worth knowing because you're going to need to use Lightburn for depth maps which for depth engraving is what I think most people are using where this struggles though is metal depth engraving I did try to engrave a coin design in layers and I gave up at just over 200 passes and that was about five hours into the job. Now the design looked fine initially, but one quick polish and most of it vanished. There is some depth, but not enough. It's just surface marking. It can be done, but more testing and patience is needed, and this just isn't as powerful as an infrared fiber laser. The strongest feature of this machine is the auto leveling system, which uses a secondary laser on the right side of the marking area to detect material height. Now, when it works, it's quick and accurate, but it only works if the head starts within its detectable range. If you try to auto level when the laser head is too high or too low, it won't automatically correct. And then you have to go to the machine, manually jog the head up and down a bit, hope you've brought it close enough, and then go back to your computer to hit autofocus again. It is a good system, it's sometimes just a bit more manual than the word auto suggests. Now unfortunately the same can't be said for the alignment setup because there's no preview camera, and that makes placement harder than it should be. And because the preview laser is also UV, it's completely invisible on most materials. And to get around that, Commarker includes an acrylic preview handle, which does help, but because it's so thick, there's a small offset between where the guide laser appears and where it actually engraves onto your stock. So the result was, most of my tests on this were completely offset from where they should be. Now, the other thing I need to mention is the lid also doesn't lift high enough to actually see the work area properly from above. In fact, it's almost the perfect visual metaphor because this is me repeatedly smashing my head against it, trying to get into a position where I could roughly see what it was going to mark. With the included kit, you're basically guessing alignment angles like you're playing a very expensive round of Battleship. And as I said, the result was most of my test engravings landed slightly off target as a result. So, conclusion time. I think everything I said in the intro still stands. The Omni X is a fascinating machine that manages to impress and irritate in equal measure. Most of the excitement comes from it being my first proper UV laser, and the technology itself is genuinely interesting, and the range of materials it can handle is impressive. Commarker makes this look and feel like a professional grade tool, and in terms of build, weight, and finish, it certainly passes the glance test. 
But once you start using it, the veneer wears thin fast. The design and usability issues pile up and you start to realize the engineering effort went mostly into appearance rather than refinement. Judged purely on its own, the Omni X is powerful, precise, sturdy, and genuinely capable of excellent results once you've got it figured out. It's not plug and play, and it's not trying to be. This is a tool for people who already understand lasers, people who know or are willing to learn Lightburn, those who have spent or are willing to spend the hours learning workflows, building jigs, tweaking layers, and don't mind when a quick job turns into an experimental afternoon. For them, this machine can absolutely shine. It's built like a tank, it's got range, it can handle materials most systems wouldn't dare touch. But again, that's more because it is a UV laser, not so much because of how it's a UV laser. For newcomers, this experience demands commitment. The workflow, the setup, and the software all take patience to learn and time to master. It's a system that rewards people who already have the skill and expects everyone else to earn it. That doesn't make it bad, it makes it specific. It's a serious tool for serious users, and if that's you, you'll appreciate what it can do. But if you're after refinement, ease, or anything remotely user-friendly, this one will test your patience long before it shows its potential. As always, if you do plan on picking one up and this video helped open your eyes to what you're buying, I'd appreciate you using the affiliate links in the description below before making a purchase. That's how I can afford to run the channel. I want to thank you for watching with a huge thank you, as always, to our channel members whose names are on screen now. You keep the lights on, the machines fed, and the sarcasm flowing. If you are new here, please consider joining as a member to get early access, exclusive videos, Discord roles, and your name in the credits. Until next Next time, I love you. I'm trying something new in my outros because I've run out of movie quotes. Anyway, Fohammer out.